Today I'm going to share with you an updated version of RVC so that you can clone your own voice and also use that voice with text-to-speech and some other features that have been added to this updated version of RVC as well that I want to share with you today. Welcome back to the channel where we discuss the creative uses of AI and voice cloning is a big topic of conversation. I learn about the coolest stuff in the comment section of these videos and that's how I heard about the tool that I'm going to share with you today. It's a special version of RVC or retrieval-based voice cloning that we've been talking a lot about about over the past few weeks that is super simple to install, includes the text-to-speech feature built right in, allows you to, of course, train your own voice. This version is called Applio, and what I really love about it is, number one, it's super easy to install. Number two, it adds the text-to-speech feature, but three, it adds another feature that might make that text-to-speech feature unnecessary for you. So let's get into it. Applio is a free download, and just like with the other caveats I gave you regarding RVC and similar technology, you're going to need an NVIDIA GPU. Please don't get upset with me. I don't create this technology. I just happen to have an NVIDIA GPU and I can share it with you. The good news here is you don't have to have a particularly powerful GPU. I, for example, on this particular demo, I'm using a pretty old graphics card. It's an NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super, and it does the job just fine. On the page here, which doesn't have a lot to say, you just click the download button. When you get to this page, you're just gonna go ahead and click on installation right here. Now you'll see that there are instructions for Windows and Linux, and I'm running a Windows machine, so I'm gonna follow those instructions. And you have choices. You can download the code from the GitHub repository, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't want that option. You can download a zip file, or you can download an executable zip file, or you can use a script. My recommendation is just to go with the exe file. You simply click download here, and it will download to your system. When you launch this file to extract, you want to make sure that you follow these instructions, that you place the Applio inside a folder on your C drive. I'm going to choose C, Applio, and click Extract. Once everything's extracted, you'll just navigate to the folder where you extracted it, and inside that folder will be an Applio v3 point, whatever the version is for you. You're gonna open that up, and then all you have to do is click Run Applio. The first time you install this, it's probably gonna download a lot of models, so it may take some time, but that's a one-time thing. So just sit tight, and then when it's done, the interface will appear on the screen. Now, if you're familiar with RVC, you'll see some similarities and you'll see some differences. One of the main differences you'll see right off the bat if you use RVC a good bit to train models from scratch is the absence of the tool that allows you to separate out stems and remove vocals from an audio track. But there's plenty of other tools that we've talked about that are absolutely free that will allow you to do that. And the reason you would do that is is to get training data for a particular voice you'd want to take out. I'll show you what we mean because we're going to build a model using this. So let's just quickly look at what we do have here. The first tab is the inference, and that's where you're going to be doing any conversions of existing audio into your cloned voice, whatever that is. The training tab is where you'll do the training to create the voice models in the first place. Text-to-speech is one of these new additions that Applio has that's not in the original RBC as text-to-speech, somewhat like you would use it with 11 Labs. You create a voice model, you type in whatever you want it to say, and then it says it. Now, the way this does this is fairly clever, and I'll show you when we get there. The Voice Blender allows you to take two different models and make a blend of them to create an entirely new voice. Plugins, I don't know what that is. I assume there's plugins for this thing out there. The Download tab is new, and it's really cool, and it makes things a lot easier in terms of adding models and downloading models. In our other videos, when we were using a conversion tool, we would need to go to a website that had these voice models, download them, and then sometimes even extract them and drag them into various folders before our conversion program would see them. But something amazing has happened happening here. If you go back to the original website, you'll see along the top here this Models tab. They already have a huge library of models that you can choose from, but you don't even have to choose them from here. You can choose them from right within the interface. Let me show you how that works. So we're going to go back into the interface. We can scroll down here to Search Model Name, and let's just go back to one of our favorites. Let's say uh, Squidward. And I'm just going to hit Enter. And look at that. This already has uh, a good many Squidward models in it. So. All we gotta do to install one of these things is copy the link from right here, for example. We'll just use this one. I'll hit Control C. I'll come up here to download model. I'm just gonna click that right in there to the model link. I'm gonna make sure there is no leading space up here. I'll just delete that up there. Okay, and then click on download model. You'll see it's processing here and it's doing all the work it needs to do in the back end automatically. It's going to download, it's going to extract what it needs to do, it's going to put the model files where they need and they'll be ready for instant use. So it says here model downloaded successfully. Let's just go test it real quick. We go back over to the inference tab and we're going to click refresh to update our list of models that we have. 
you'll find Squidward down here. We're going to just click that. And then in terms of choosing the audio you convert, one of the things I love about this new updated version is we no longer have to copy and paste a path of where the file is. We can simply click to upload a path like the old fashioned way or drag and drop. Or my very favorite way is to click on this microphone here and just record directly to the page. Of course, you want to make sure that your microphone is set up and all of that is working properly. But then all you have to do is record your audio right here. And now I'm imitating Squidward because it helps the model do it a little better. I know sometimes people get give me grief because I'm doing an imitation and why don't I let the model do it? Well, it just turns out better this way. Okay, so now there's our audio file right there. Now I'm imitating. That's just me and now I'm going to click convert and you will see that as I'm talking it's going to happen in just seconds. And now I'm imitating Squidward because it helps the model do it a little better. I know sometimes people give me grief because I'm doing an imitation and why don't I let the model do it? How? And I can choose anybody else from this list here. Let's just say this narrator file and click convert. And really just as quickly it's converted again. Just seconds. And now I'm imitating Squidward because it helps the model do it a little better. I know sometimes people give me grief because I'm... That's obviously not supposed to be Squidward's voice. That's a narrator voice. So how does it work with text-to-speech? Well, let's go find out. First, click the text-to-speech tab, and then we can choose whatever voice we want to use for the conversion. Here's one for just SpongeBob himself. Now, because RBC is a conversion program, it's not like Eleven Labs where it creates a voice file out of text. But there's plenty of other technology that does, and that technology has now been built into Applio. The way it works is first it's going to take the text that you type, it's going to generate it in one of these many voices that it's already predefined with various dialects and accents from all over the world, and then it will take that voice and convert it from the voice you chose from your model dropdown. From what I can gather, the first couple of initials are the language and I can't identify all of them but EN I'm taking as English and then next in the capital letters is the I think the country of origin and so there's going to be a certain dialect it'll be the English language but it will have a dialect to it the so Squidward we're just gonna say he's an American we're going to choose a, a male US voice just as a starting point and then we're gonna type in what we want Squidward to say why do I constantly have to be used as an example for these land walkers. Yeah. Or you can upload a text file which has that text in it. You have the same advanced settings except you have a couple of additional options. Where do you want this converted audio to go? And then the other options that we had here. But let's listen to it. Why do I constantly have to be used as an example for these land walkers? Oh, I forgot. I'm using SpongeBob, not Squidward. But you can see how it works. Let's type another sentence for him to say and we're going to up the pitch a little bit. I totally forgot what I was doing and who I was supposed to be. Isn't that funny, Patrick? Okay, and just click, go down, click convert. And you'll see again, it happens in just seconds. Done. I totally forgot what I was doing and who I was supposed to be. And I forgot that I was gonna raise the pitch. So let's go back up to advanced settings here. Take this pitch, just knock it up, I don't know, a few tones to make it a little bit more SpongeBobby. Click convert. Wait just mere fractions of a second, sort of-ish, and we're ready. I totally forgot what I was doing and who I was supposed to be. Isn't that funny, Patrick? So that's very text-to-speechy, and sometimes that's the fault of this model up here. Some of them sound way more natural than others. Let's try Eric, for example, and we'll just try this again. Now remember, it's converting the text into Eric's voice first, and then it's taking Eric's voice and converting it into SpongeBob in this case. I totally forgot what I was doing and who I was supposed to be. Isn't that funny, Patrick? That is about the same, actually. That's why I like the ability to just record your own audio file. That way I have total control. I forgot what I was doing and who I was supposed to be. Isn't that funny, Patrick? Uh, Patrick? See, I can add a little bit more in there, definitely add the emotion, accent the right syllables, and all of those things I want, and then click on Convert. Change this over to SpongeBob, and click Convert. I forget what I was doing and who I was supposed to be. Isn't that funny, Patrick? Uh, Patrick? Really good job. Now let's use this to train a model. If you watch my other video on training a model with RBC, I'm going to do things a little differently here. I'm going to use different values. And for the most part, I'm just going to use their defaults rather than trying to do something clever that I saw on other videos just to see what happens. And also show you another really cool feature that I tried out once before I made this video and it worked fantastic. I'm going to hope that it works this time too. Things are a little bit more clear in this version too. Instead of saying experiment name like it did in the other RBC, it says the model name. Like what's the model name you want to create? I'm going to create a model of my friend Rob 
and I've got 20 minutes of him that I've taken from a show that we do together on the internet. And so I'm gonna go ahead and call this Rob from the show because I might record Rob from a sound booth, I might record Rob, you know, and then have different kind of reads. I probably won't do that. All right, and then the path to the data set folder. In this case, I do still have to copy and paste the path to the data folder. I don't know why, and I wish they would change it, but in this case, the folder's here. I'm gonna go in there, and inside that folder is my 20-minute audio file. We talked about how to create an audio file for training in another video. Basically, you wanna get just pure voice data. If it's for a singing model and you can get singing, that's great. If it's for a speaking model, that's fine. It also works pretty well for singing. You just miss some of the nuances that only singing delivers. But you want 20 minutes of clean, noiseless, no harmonies, no background noises, and you put it in here. You can put in a series of files, or you can put in one large file. In this case, I have a 16 minute and 38 second file, which I'm gonna use. I'm gonna come right up here. I'm gonna right click up here where it says raw for training. I'm gonna say copy address as text. I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna paste that. This data set creator is an option that's new to this and I don't know what it means. I didn't check it last time and I still got my model. I'm not going to mess with things right now. I'll learn a little bit about this later. I'm going to keep the sampling rate at 40. Normally I would go up to 48 and I'm going to keep the RBC version at 2. Now I click pre-process data set and wait just a few seconds. Unlike RBC, we don't have a way right here on the screen to track what's going on, but along the bottom of the screen there is a terminal window that you can look at and so it's showing you all the output that is happening in this particular task. So starting pre-processing, it's done doing that and it will say that here, pre-process data set model Rob from the show pre-processed successfully. Okay, so now we're gonna go down here and choose our pitch extraction algorithm, which we're going to leave at RMVPE. And we don't have to do anything else here except click extract features. This will take a little bit longer and we can again track the progress of it down here. Now this process will go slower or faster based on your GPU. My other system has an RTX 3090 on it and this whole process would go a lot faster on this, but it is doable and it doesn't take that long. Also the length of this particular process is going to absolutely depend on how much audio you have in that folder to process. And keep in mind, this is not the training part. This is just getting things ready for training. You can see it broke it up into literally hundreds of little tiny wave files. All right, feature extraction is done. Model Rob from the show extracted successfully. Now, before we click the start training button, let's check our settings here. This is where I'm doing things pretty differently than I've done in every other model I've done. But I was watching some other videos on this whole process and it seemed to indicate that I might have better results if I change some of my settings. I tried it and it worked just fine. We're gonna hope that the same thing happens here with the Rob from the show model. For example, normally with RBC, I would crank this all the way up because my card would handle it. Instead, I'm gonna keep it down at eight because from what I understand, the smaller the batch size, the more precise the conversion is. In fact, what I saw recommended a batch size of four for the very best, eight being good enough. And eight is what's gonna happen now because otherwise your training's gonna take, I don't know, maybe twice as long, that's a guess. Save every epoch. In my other videos, I've always saved them every 50 epochs or so with a total epoch setting of about 250, so I have like five models to choose from. I'm learning that people take lots of different approaches to this model thing. They'll create many, many different versions of it and test them over and over again and look at all kinds of graphs and data to find out which one is specifically the best match. I generally go by ear. You can do it however you want to. We're gonna go by ear today, and if you wanna drill down into the technical aspects of it, you go for it. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this up to 50 because I'm not gonna train that many and I will take the total epochs here to 250. Under here, we want to keep pitch guidance clicked, especially if you're creating a model that's going to sing because that's where all that data is contained. There's lots of reasons to keep save only latest off in terms of going back and maybe trying to retrain your model or other reasons you want all the iterations. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that unchecked now. Save every weights. This setting enables you to save the weights of the model at the conclusion of each epoch. That way you can test it, so I leave that set. Custom pre-trained, I leave off. GPU settings, since I have a GPU, I will click it on, but really the only thing you have is the ability to choose which GPU you're using. In this case, I only have the one. It is the RTX 2070 Super, as I mentioned before, with eight gigs of RAM. And the last thing, which is new, or at least new to me, I never noticed anything like this before, is the overtraining detector. It detects overtraining to prevent the model from learning the training data too well and losing the ability to generalize to new data. Basically, you never want to overtrain your model. And that's where people start looking at graphs and analyzing all the numbers and going here, here, right here is where we need to do it. Well, this takes a lot of that out of the equation for you. Just click on overtraining director 
and it says set the maximum number of epochs you want your model to stop training if no improvement is detected. Once it determines that, hey, I think this is as good as it's going to get, it won't do any more than 50 epochs. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to leave that there too, and I'm going to click on start training. We can track the progress of the training again in the terminal window here. Now, in terms of how long this is going to take, it depends on a lot of things. First of all, of course, the GPU. Most of the models I train on my faster GPU for good reason, but for the purposes of this demonstration and for my testing earlier, I used this GPU. I thought it was going to take about an hour and 20 minutes based on the math and the numbers it was running and showing me on the screen as how fast it was doing each epoch, but then it actually ended early because it detected overtraining. Then I listened to it where it stopped right then and it sounded fine. We're going to hope that something like that happens here. If it ends early, that's great. Otherwise, this might take as much as an hour and 20 minutes, whereas when I used to use the other RBC, it only took me about 20 or 30 minutes to train a voice because my batch size was much larger and the GPU was faster. So as you can see here, it's a fairly slow process to get started here. We'll check back when the model is done. Okay, if we look at the log, it's been about 20 minutes actually, and it stopped. And the reason it stopped is because it sensed overtraining. So at 50 epochs, it saved, which is what I told it to do. And then immediately, because I told it not to do any more than 50 epochs if it, it reached overtraining detected, it stopped and saved. It says right here, stopping training due to possible overtraining. And it saved an index file that we can use. It should be ready to test. Let's go over to the inference tab and click Rob from the show. There it is. And we'll click the index file. It should be there as well. Rob from the show, and then let's just record something. Hi, I'm Rob, and even though Bob Doyle is using his voice to make me say this, I just want you to know that it's done 100% against my will, and um, yeah, basically anything that you hear with my voice, you probably shouldn't trust because it's probably just Bob. That should be good for his voiceover career. Let's click on convert. That took, what, two and a half seconds? I don't know, nothing. Let's listen. Hi, I'm Rob, and even though Bob Doyle is using his voice to make me say this, I just want you to know that it's done 100% against my will. Okay, I noticed that I've got the pitch up a little bit. I can tell, yep, from a previous setting. I'm going to pop this down. His voice is a little bit higher than mine. I'm going to put it to four instead of zero, but let's just see what happens, since it takes basically no time to convert. Hi, I'm Rob, and even though Bob Doyle is using his voice to make me say this, I just want you to know that it's done 100% against my will. And um, yeah, basically. So there you go, in about 20 minutes, with a 20 minute sample, I got a usable voice clone. Now I'm sure that if I had kept the epochs up at 250 and maybe not stopped it when it detected possible overtraining, it might've gone on and might've gotten a little bit better quality. And this is definitely something I'm going to test as time goes on, but I wanted to show you this because there's, there's a lot of interest in the voice cloning and my goal is to make it as easy for you as possible to get started. And this is probably one of the best and easiest tools to install, run, and get great results from that I've seen. Even though I know that this particular tool needs you to have an NVIDIA GPU and therefore excludes a lot of people out there. If you do qualify to use this software, this is a great all-in-one cloning and conversion tool, which adds the benefit of text-to-speech, which does a fairly decent job and the ability to record the source audio file to be converted right into the interface with no more weird copying and pasting paths to files on your system. If things like voice cloning, face swapping, AI art, AI video, AI animation, if these things interest you, then I invite you to subscribe to this channel because that's all we do here. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I...